Tervetuloa rautaan suomenkielistä metallia suomenkielisille yleisölle. Tänään meillä on pari tämmöistä metallihemmoa. Te ehkä saatte nyt... Wait a second, wait a second. Now something is wrong. Mikä sun nimi oli? Kaitsu. Ja sä olit? Tuomas. Let's take the same in English. Sir, you are the mastermind behind the band called Nightwish. So your name is Tuomas, right? Correct. And you are a guy to play some percussion instruments. Yeah, and, All right. and drums. <laughs> Dr- drums, okay. So this is Nightwish, not your typical, uh, well, extreme metal interview. So here we are at NotFest 2022, and you are being a headliner. Uh, so you are really, really filling the big boots on Finnish soil as well, once again. Uh, how does it feel after these uh, interesting two past years? to do these shows again. It feels like it was about time. And today uh, it just feels like a huge privilege to be able to headline such a legendary festival coming to Finland for the first time. So um, any butterflies in your tummy, so to speak, or is it just a routine thing? Uh, Well, actually it's the final show of the festival season for us, which has been pretty intense. We have had a one or two shows every single weekend Mm -hmm. for the past three months and this is the last one and whenever you have a last show of a leg you have these weird bitter sweet melancholic feelings on the other hand it's nice to have a little breather at home on the Mm -hmm. other hand i'm not going to be seeing these guys for two months Uh, it's quite a long break then yeah so but uh, we're just going to have a blast tonight that's the most important thing obviously how about you sir uh We mentioned this uh, elephant in the room, the big parade before the, the so-called resurrection of the live thing going on. How does it feel to be back in the business? Of course, vacuuming the house after like two years in a row, like never, I've never. I guess I've never vacuumed my house that much, and I have done it for the past two years. So it was really nice to be yourself again, you know, <laughs> in a way. Of course, you, you enjoy mm. the time off. And and there was uh, some good and positive things you could spend some time with your kids and and stuff like that. But but still, uh, you you missed the the live live performance because the new album came out and then it, everything stopped. So it was uh, it's been great now. I've, I've been really enjoying doing this again. Has it affected you as musicians, creators of music, and all that stuff that you haven't been able to tour, play gigs like? How do you deal with the, the normal activity? Like, okay, I'm used to play a show, but now instead I'm twisting my thumbs. Yeah, in a way, like I said, it, there was uh, some positive things and, and negative things, but also I think most of us, they we weren't like just staying at the couch. Like I was teaching like m- maybe more than I have for the, for the past 10 years. So I had a lot of students. So I was spending some time with, with the drums anyway. But st- still, you know, we did some few albums with Thomas, the Auri, mm-hmm. Auri second album, and the Dark Woods, My Betrothed, the black black metal thing. Mm-hmm. So, so we were still productive instead of just and and that break made us to do things that we weren't probably able to do it. So this kind so, of opened up an opportunity. Yeah, it was like just another door open when some something closed for a while. And then, of course, now we're, when we are back with the band and playing live, it's it's great. And now we have to focus on this. I so remember I, immediately when the lockdown happened, I was like, this might last a while, so mm-hmm. I better come up with something productive to do. And instantly I thought, okay, new Ari album, new Dark Woods, my Throat album. And then I ended up playing uh, for the new Kotiteollisuus album as well. Mm-hmm. And even got all the songs for the next Nightwish album done. So it's been a really productive two and a half years. But still, it's really great to be back on tour. Definitely, especially yeah. for the fans. I mean, people love, of course, new music coming with albums and all, but you know, you can't beat live presence and all. Uh, but now yeah. that it was mentioned, uh, Dark Woods might be true, that became kind of like as a surprise gift for uh, a lot of us people who have been like thinking that, okay, this band is a goner and mm. never will be back. And suddenly, okay, it comes up with even stronger music than ever before. And it also features you and everybody was like, okay, no, no, Thomas is way too busy with Nightwish, blah, blah, blah. And suddenly there's this mm. strong album. Can you share a little bit light into this project? Like you are digging old bones up and making them shine better. How is that possible? 
we have this high school reunion. Mm -hmm. We have had it for the past 15 years, and the guitarist of Dark Woods is a part of that group. And every single time we meet, this is always in July, we end up getting really drunk by the campfire and talking <laughs> about the comeback of Dark Woods Mappy Throat. And the next day it's always forgotten, except now. Because of COVID, we all thought that it's now or never really, guys. We have to do it. We have been talking about this for 15 years. Everybody wants to do it. The music is there. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just make it happen? Come to my place in Kite. Let's record the whole thing. And that's how it got started. And it was just beautiful from beginning to the end. Because the guys, they haven't changed at all. It's still the same as 25 years ago. Which feels kind of a weird at the same time, but also, I guess, There familiar? was a lot of familiar, yeah. And there was a lot of nostalgia involved. There was a lot of passion in writing the music, coming up with the concept based on this Teemu Keskisarja book. And it was just a lovely process. Uh, just doing music with your best mates at its best. And I don't think we have seen the all of Dark Woods yet. That is some fantastic news. Uh, Now, how does it feel to play black metal instead of this so-called symphonic thing? I mean, Nightwish is beyond just one genre. Yeah. And uh, suddenly you are kind of a, like uh, downsizing your creativity in order to make uh, kind of a keyboard field black metal. Uh, I love the balance of it all. In Nightwish, I do 90% of the stuff. In Dark Woods I only do the keyboards, arranging, no songwriting at all. And then in our third band, Ari, we split everything in three. Okay. So it's a lovely balance. Okay, so it's like, uh, you know, taking different kind of meals in a way. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, supper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know where, where I get this weird analog. So what are, what are you? you You're not exactly the original member of Dark Woods, no, no. Brother, but you ended up being part of that. Yeah, because uh, Toma, I, I remember uh, like it was 20 years before that happened. Uh, I met uh, one of the guys in in Kuopio mm -hmm. in a Valhalla bar, and Thank we had Larry. yeah, and we had a show with Rotten Sound, and I, we finished the show and I went to the bar to buy a beer, uh, to get a beer, and uh, this one guy came to me like, okay, next time Dark Woods is gonna make an album, you're gonna play the drums. And I was like, of course, Simon. And, and we shook hands. And 20 years later, it actually happened. So it was kind of and like the, a promise that, made in hell. I, I made this <laughs> promise in, in that bar 20 years er, earlier. And, and then I, I remember that, that. Oh, shit, that, this is what, uh, what actually happened. So I made a promise and I kept it. Wow! But of course, it was because of Th Thomas asked me to, yeah. to, to, to play, play the drums. And I remember I got the demos. And I was looking at the, some, the charts. That, okay, tempo is 130, uh, one, one, 130 beats per minute. And I was listening to the song. Oh fucking hell! This is 30 second notes. So it means 260. Yeah, like <laughs> super fast. Super fast. And I haven't played that stuff, you know, since I left Rotten Sound in yeah, 2000, which was very two, 2006, fantastic. Two, you know. Yeah, 2006. Yeah. So I, I still thought that oh fuck, I'm, I'm actually fucked now. So I'm, I'm gonna embarrass myself. But when I went to the studio, I don't know. I don't know what clicked. I just went back to that mood again. Mm -hmm. So I was like, it came really easy, in a way. Of course, the ch songs were really challenging, and of course, I didn't have the stamina. So if we would have, okay, you have to play a show now. So then it's a different thing. I have to have like two, three months to prepare, to to my my energy level. But I still could play the play the parts I wanted to play. So it was actually quite rewarding and, and a really fun project to do and I really love the stuff. Wow, that's, yeah. a, that's a cool yeah. cool yeah. thing to hear. Yeah. Now, the, the other elephant, more importantly, I guess, that we're going back to Nightwish is that, okay, uh, Marco is no longer in the band, uh, so what's what's happening in, in the future? What is happening now with the things, when the things have changed, how they were? Things are truly wonderful at the moment. Jukis is a superb guy. He's exactly the right guy for the band for the time being. But uh, also, in all honesty, when Marco dropped the bomb, uh, I was absolutely sure that that's the end of the band well, yeah. for about a couple of days. I remember calling Empu yeah. and say, we were just laughing, like, mm -hmm. this is ridiculous. It cannot be happening again. The band has gone through so much 
shit in the drama uh, lots of drama lots of yeah. drama and we have always survived and i told him i don't think we'll survive i can't take this anymore but then after a couple of days we talked with the managers and the with the other band members and i thought it's been quite the ride for 25 years do we want to end it like this exactly it would be a shame it would be such a shame yeah. you know if we go out let's go out with some dignity at guns least. guns blazing yeah so let's give it one more shot i mean we have survived some really big changes in the past maybe we can survive this one as well I always think of Iron Maiden if they could survive Dickinson leading the band. I'd like, hey, we can do it. Yeah, but then yeah. he came back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we said. You want to yeah. talk about? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. But, so, but, 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 but th- yeah. thinking about it, I mean, I was driving here uh, and thinking about some of the questions, some of the conversation topics, and like, okay, you have basically like three different eras with uh, always lead singer being changed. This time it wasn't lead singer changing, but a vital important part. And now we are mm. basically era the fourth chapter of the band, if you will, and uh, what kind of uh, possibilities this will uh, give to you now that you've survived the uh, catastrophe? To me, it just tells that uh, there's an invi- invincible force, invisible, I'm sorry, invisible force going on in this band. There's something about the music that uh, keeps afloat despite the band members changing so often. And uh, I can't really Uh, understand what it is. I guess it's the power of music and something that we cannot see. And I'm just ultimately grateful for that. That uh, we have survived, survived all these things. But uh, it's it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and of course, Marco was so so strong character and his voice and everything. What he did for the band for the twenty years that he was involved. So it, we thought that it would be kind of stupid to try to find a replacement bass player who can also sing mm-hmm. because he's not going to be Marco anyway nobody's going to be Marco yeah you can't replace it it, 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 it would be kind of okay it would be the never ending battle between ba- between the the fans that okay there's this guy who can sing like Marco's part but he's not Marco so yeah. so why why try to even replace somebody that you can't replace exactly. ever, ever. So I think this has been been a wonderful um, like direction we took now that we you can place the bass and we still have Floor and, and Troy who can who can sing. So what we don't need at the moment, you know, third voice because we, we saw that we can still survive. We have two wonderful singers. Yeah. And for me personally, it all boils down to the one simple fact that making music, writing songs, creating new worlds is still the best thing in the world for me personally. And I don't want that to stop. That's a very, very good, uh, how to say, uh, rule or rule of thumb mm. or whatever you want to call it. Uh, mm. Now you also mentioned, you kind of teased us in the beginning of this interview about like, okay, you have already new music out. Now, obviously, you cannot reveal all and everything. It would be kind of a p- impossible, but can you give any kind of uh, ideas like uh, hints or whatever about the new Nightwish, the next chapter or next album whatever it will be I feel it's gonna be the third part of a trilogy started by endless forms most beautiful mm-hmm. followed by human nature and then finished by this upcoming album and uh, what will happen after the trilogy you obviously have planned that as I well. have absolutely no idea <laughs> <laughs> will, will it all still uh, go with some kind of uh, Disney vibe if you will everybody knows you're uh, inspired by some of the creations of... Uh, I've heard it many times that uh, uh, our genre is called Disney metal. Wow! And <laughs> I think that's a brilliant description of what we are. Landscape metal is also one, which is good, but okay. Disney metal, wow. Does that also include Marvel and Star Wars now that we're talking about this big-ass company? <laughs> Not Marvel for me, I hate superhero films. Oh no, I'm gonna get <laughs> fucked. Oh, jokes aside. So, okay, it's, it's gonna be more into something familiar but also something new i guess there's always something new uh, it's important for my own mental health mm-hmm. when it comes to writing music that you need to search for some new territories and try not to repeat yourself and that can be heard on the upcoming album for yes, sure for sure already on the demo that we have done so what kind of uh, ideas i mean you've been using a lot of science in in, in your lyrics and, and themes of the album 
will this trilogy, as you meant, the, the kind of last part of it, will that go into the same direction as well? Yes and no. I mean, it sails on the same waters, but there's some new surprises there as well. Which obviously you can't reveal at all. Well, we're entering the studio next year. Uh, and the album is going to come out maybe early 2024, so it's a bit early. <laughs> kind of a wait. Yeah. All right. Uh, now that we mentioned these other bands and uh, projects you have been going on, how important, how vital it is to have these uh, different outlets for your creativity? I mean, even though you don't exactly play keyboards and set up the orchestra, obviously you have a lot of input in the music with your instruments and all. So. Uh, how how do you fill all these slots, so to say, to do the different kind of things? Yeah, because I, I've been always interested in different styles of music, and I've been playing jazz, I've been playing uh, like uh, Latin music and, and some classical stuff, and blah blah blah, and also some Finnish slugger music. So it's it's been it's been quite quite a ride to to do different things, and I've always been open to new stuff, and and haven't really limited myself. To just do one thing. So even in in the Rotten Sound era, I, I I did a lot of jazz concerts and I played in Dixieland jazz band for ten years and stuff like that. So so it's always been great to to just explore the music and not just try to put it in a certain box that okay you need to do this. Of course, always the song di dictates what's the best way to present it. So you have to be kind of egoless also what you do. So that's so absolutely the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. The way I think about songwriting is that these songs, they already exist. We just excavate them and then listen to them carefully. How would you like to be presented and played out to the world and be really humble before the song and tell the story in the best possible way. Yeah, even you could do, do a million different things, but it doesn't require that. Probably, so you need you need to also always be really sensitive what the song really needs from you, or should you just shut the fuck up and don't play anything? Yeah, that's also sometimes the best thing to do. Don't play anything. Before I let you go, it seems we are getting those weird hand signs below, below behind yeah. the camera. Uh, one thing I need to know because you mentioned the ego thing. Um, you both are known some of the like the best people in the business when it comes to your personal chosen instruments. And now I know a lot of rock stars can get kind of like too much and like, hey, I'm the lord of the world and nobody can touch me. How do you avoid that? How do you stay humble being the most respected drummer in Finland, most respected keyboard player? What is your secret to say humble and let's just let the music do the talking? I, I, st I still practice because I, I understand the, the possibilities, what, what I can become, but I also understand I never gonna be become that good that I want to become because if you think about too much yourself okay what can I do and I think it's always that if, if you're too happy what you do you're too uh, satisfied then you stop learning like satisfaction kills the uh, yeah you progress. stop you stop learning and I'm still learning I'm still practicing and I'm still exploring the, my instrument and, and music so it's it's uh, it's one thing I I, I, st I started to do when I was Six years old, and I'm still doing it the same same way. So, hmm. yeah. What, what about you, Thomas? What, what is your uh, solution to stay humble and focus on the music rather than being this ultimate rock star? This is actually a true story. Um, I imagine myself going and sitting on the rings of the planet of Saturn and looking at the really small pale blue dot, which is planet Earth, and that puts everything in scale. That reminds me of the privilege of being alive, for one thing, and uh, being able to do what I love <clears throat> the most in life, which is creating music. And uh, if that doesn't make you humble, then not, nothing will. Now, this is a really geek question, but can you imagine how lightweight and small you have to be in order to uh, sit down on one of those uh, dust particles on a, on a ring of Saturn? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am very small. <laughs> All right. This is a very, very uh, good and humble way to uh, end this uh, interview. I hope you have been enjoying this talk with these guys. And if you're new to the band, well, you have a wonderful world ready to be uh, conquering your ears. And if you're a veteran to the band, well, 
I hope this made you happy. Check out these guys' music once again. Check out them live. They're gonna blast your world and make you a little bit more happier person. I'm pretty sure of that. And if I'm wrong, I'm never wrong. Ah, okay. <laughs> See ya and uh, good night. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Kiitos. Otetaan vähän fotoa. Totta kai. No niin, sehän meni hyvin.